Hello and welcome to another episode of the Afterburners podcast. It is Tuesday, July 17th, 2018. I'm your host, Sam Niedemeyer, and with me as always is Bobby Koch, and I believe he's laughing because you were thinking about The Daily Show. Yeah, every single time you do that, The Daily Show music pops into my head. I can't help it. Just every single time you say the date, it pops into my head. Uh, it's good to see you again. It's good to see you. It's another week. We had a really fun show last week. I had a great show this week. Um, it's also really good to see you because apparently you survived this crazy storm that just hit the entire East Coast. Yeah, like, that storm came out of nowhere. Yeah. It was kind of, it was very weird. Uh, I had to go get my dog in it, but thankfully I went when it was a little lighter out, but I heard you got stuck in the tunnel, so. Yeah, it usually takes 20 to 25 minutes for me to get here from my apartment, and it took like an hour and 10. But also, did you see what, what happened in D.C.? I did not. So there's like flooding everywhere and like on, on the on Capitol Hill, right? Like people's offices were flooding. And then also Trump was like giving a speech and the lights went out at the White House because all the power like went out in D.C. for a minute. Or some grid went out. It was like pretty funny. But that was the exact same storm that went all the way from from D.C. hit Baltimore, Philly, all the way up here to New York. It's crazy. Well, what we haven't mentioned is the Afterburners is now a weather podcast, <laughs> not a football podcast. Listen, man, weather's a big part of, you know, the day. Sure. Yeah. But why don't we get back to football and also introduce our guest who has politely been waiting to say something. Well, what I was going to lead into was see if there's any type of complaints he has out in beautiful San Diego with the weather. But he mm -hmm. is um, Matt Price. He's the senior writer at DLF. He's the host of the DLF Pod, which is at DLF Podcast, co-host of Dynasty Game Night. Uh, he's also the senior zookeeper, I believe, at San Diego Zoo and the host of Zookeeper Stories. That's a lot, a lot of, of, of accolades and credits right there. Mr. Matt Price, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great, guys. I, I love the show. It's always fun to listen, so I'm excited to be on it with you fellas. Did we get all the credits correct? I feel like I, I missed out like a <laughs> sir or a lord or a duke. <laughs> I don't think they knight zookeepers yet. Uh, if they do, I'll, I'll let you know. Though. That's cool, man. Yeah, so welcome to the show. Really happy to have you. And you're, you're out in San Diego, right? So the weather is pretty good and everything. It's, uh, I mean, we're, we're, we're in the period of about you know three weeks to a month of when it's really hot. Uh, but for the most part, it's beautiful here. 70s most of the time. Right now, it's like we, we last week Last week we had a couple of days in the, it, that just hit a touch to 100. So uh, pretty warm. But for the most part, I mean, it's too hard to it's hard to complain about this. San Diegans, let me tell you, we are we're, we it makes you soft living here. Anything colder than about 60 degrees and anything hotter than about 80 degrees. And we're complaining about it. Let me ask you a quick question before we get to the show. Are you a shorts or pants guy? Do you, do you wear shorts? I do wear shorts for several weeks out of the year, but for the most part, I'm pants. It's only when it's like super hot out and um, like I really want to wear flip flops. Like I don't know. I have a weird thing about wearing flip flops with jeans or pants because like the way they hit my feet. So if ever if I ever want to wear sandals or flip flops, I generally wear shorts. But for the most part, I'd say, I don't know, 11 out of the 12 months of the year, I'm definitely team pants. Yeah, and my dog just made an appearance on the uh, podcast. He heard that you dealt with animals all day, so he figured, why not <laughs> add in his own little appearance? He probably heard the comforting voice of the senior, senior zookeeper at San Diego Zoo and thought, you know what? That's a guy I could hang out with. I, I, not that any of my coworkers are listening to this because most of them don't play fantasy football, but I do want to say that I am not the senior zookeeper. We can, we can say that, that I am, but there's many <laughs> senior zookeepers. It's just a, just a, a level there. Well, if anybody wants to sue us, we're completely broke. So whatever, <laughs> they're going to get nothing from us except for maybe the name. So let's get started, man. You want to talk some football? Bobby, you ready? Yeah, absolutely. yeah, let's do it, man. All right, guys, we had a great show for you today. Uh, as we said, we have Matt Price. We're going to talk some questions. A lot of questions that we've had on Twitter the last a uh, few weeks and, and the last few days, actually. So we want to get to those talk, Marcus Mariota, Patrick Mahomes, and a very dark, dark question. We'll wait till later. It's kind of funny, but it's a little dark. Before that, uh, we're going to start with Matt tossing out where you can find him on Twitter, anywhere else you can find uh, his work, including DLF. Bobby's going to follow up, and then we'll get started. Yeah, you can find all of my football-related things at dynastyleaguefootball.com. You can follow the podcast at DLF Podcast. You can follow me at M. Pricer. Uh, I also do the Dynasty Game Night podcast with my friend John Bosch at Empire FFL for him or at DGN Pod for the podcast. And uh, I, I don't have a, a handle for the... I Actually, I do have a handle for the Zookeeper Stories podcast. It's just at Zookeeper Story because it's like, you know, three 
three characters too short, but I don't really use it very much. I'm really bad about using to even to tweet out the show. So I usually just use it from my main handle at mpricer. And you can find me uh, at Rec Fantasy. That's R-E-K-E-D Fantasy. People of the show are very familiar with John Bosch, who calls me a Twitter tough guy. Uh, make sure you check out TGN Pod. It's one of my favorites in my permanent rotation. And you can find my work on DLF football as well as 2QBs. And I think Sal would probably fire me if I didn't mention that 2QBs had a draft guide drop today. And if you buy that, there's so much good information in it. 10% of all the profits is going to NCADV and it'll make you feel good to buy one. So go ahead and do that. And Sam, where can they find us? Yeah, great stuff. This is the Afterburners podcast at Afterburners pod. It's on Twitter. You can find us on Podbean, Stitcher, and iTunes. We're up to eight reviews. I believe we're all at five stars. Humble brag. Uh, <laughs> two more and obviously we'll get those shirts sent out. Uh, but you can find us also on iTunes. Subscribe and download as well and i am at the needy one on twitter and guys you can find uh and i'm at the needy one on twitter all right so matt we have a very interesting question for you that we wanted to get started uh you are the most qualified person that we've ever had and that i've ever talked to in regards to this question now one of one quick story one of the ways bobby and i first met was you know, he, we worked at a previous job. We, we, we had worked at previous websites before writing fantasy sports, but we never really met. We first met, at, we worked at the same company, uh, and uh, I asked him a question. I asked everybody a question. I asked, because no one knew who I was, what was going on, or if I was actually legitimately crazy. My question was, who wins in a fight? An average-sized black bear or an average-sized American alligator? Uh, one quick correction. When he asked me the question, it literally was just bear versus gator. And one of the things that I guess we bonded over was my first, instead of answering right away, I said, what size bear are we talking about? What size gator? <laughs> What's the terrain like? So he appreciated the fact that I asked a bunch of questions. Not a fan of people immediately answering that question. I like. I want them to delve into it and really think about it. So, uh, so Matt, as the most qualified person, Give us your, your two cents on here. I, I will answer this question because you asked me to, but I do want to let you know, guys know that th these are typically some of the, and not, not for me personally, but for the most part, these are the type of questions that zookeepers hate the most because we do get them <laughs> at the zoo all the time. Who would win between a shark and a whatever or whatever, you know? So, um, but in this case, I mean, it, it really depends on, it does really does depend on a lot of things. Like if the bear's in the water, like he's done, right? Like he's, he's not going to be able to survive that. But a bear is smarter than a gator is uh, by or several orders of magnitudes. But you, you might have heard the phrase reptile brain before. I mean, a gator is a reptile, so it has a reptile brain, but they're more, you know, they're more programmed for the things that they need to do for survival, whereas bears are very intelligent. They problem solve, that kind of thing. Um, so, I mean, I am a little bit biased because I take care of bears and I love bears. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say bear because you know, the, the gator is is like a walking tank, right? Or a swimming tank, however you look at it. But that underside, that underside is very soft. And one of the tendencies that gators have to do when they grab something with their mouth is to go into this thing called a death roll, where they kind of spin around, uh, especially under the water. It works really well at at tearing, uh, you know, fish flesh or the things that they would eat for the most part when they're spin like that in their teeth. But bears are also very fat <laughs> for the most part. If it's a if it's a well sized bear, it's fat. So when that gator grabs onto a bear, it's going to grab a big full of, mouthful of fat. It's going to grab a mouthful of fur maybe a little bit of muscle, but it's probably not going to do too much damage to the bear right away. Um, you know, the first bite might, might kind of scare the bear because gators do have uh, one of the, the strongest bites in the animal kingdom. I believe they're around 2000 pounds per square inch force on their bite. However, if the bear, if, if, if the gator grabs the bear and just gets that mouthful of fur and fat and it starts doing that death roll, the bear is going to be able to, to have access to that soft underbelly with its claws and, and do a lot of damage there. Um, so if we're talking about average size bear and, and gator and it's not in the water, I got to go with the bear. That is phenomenal. And it's also quite, quite similar. I mean, obviously you had a more metric data heavy, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and I give, when, especially after like two or three, you know, beers. But uh, that was without a doubt the greatest answer I've ever heard. And it might not surprise you that I am Team Bear. We're decidedly Team Bear on this. I was going to say, I know Bobby is for sure. So I didn't know if I was disappointing you there, Sam. 
No, it's funny. We when we we it's usually split about 50-50. One thing I have noticed that's interesting in the entire bear versus gator dynamic <laughs> is that the further south somebody lives or is from, they typically do choose gator. And the more north somebody lives, they typically choose bear. Now, I don't have any data or metrics to back that up, but that's typically the, the observations. He I asked our fantasy football league, and based on the geographic locations, it worked out that the people who were in southern states tended to say gator. I believe it. People, I used to live in Florida for about three. Well, I lived in Florida for long that. The last time I lived there was three years when I worked at uh, Disney's Animal Kingdom, and people there are terrified of gators for sure. So that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so r real quick, we, we mentioned the terrified of gators. I... I, I Strong possibility we actually also also might delete this after I say it, but <laughs> there is. I just read an article of a guy in the Everglades tranquilizing gators and raping them, and it wow. was the grossest thing I've ever. I read it on the train today, literally. Yeah, we're definitely deleting. Yeah, that. that's interesting. <laughs> I can't comment on that, but if you have, uh, if you haven't done so, look up something like. I don't know what you would Google necessarily, but like uh, like giant python eats gators because in the Everglades, people let let these giant. Uh, I, I think a lot of them are Burmese pythons, which can which can grow fifteen to twenty feet. You know, just ridiculously huge. Like there are pictures of of those snakes that have been let go that were ex pets, presumably just just eating like like a, like a completely stretched out snake that has a gator in its belly. Like it's yeah, it's that's pretty why incredible. I'll never live in Florida. I'm terrified. Of yeah. No, don't. There's no. I mean, sorry, Floridians. I'm sure you have some lesser than Floridians, but honestly, come on. It's it's hot. It's humid, it, 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 and it's flat. And there's not really anything to do unless you're into Disney or or some overrated beaches. <laughs> it's interesting. So, 14, 15 minutes into this podcast, we've had two kind of hot takes about bear over gator and how much no one wants to live in Florida. And all of us agree here. This could be a boring show. Let's try to get some some. We're gonna go to the football right now. We're gonna we're gonna transition our way. We're gonna try to make some some really good hot hot takes here that we can uh, just stimulate some more fighting and debate between us, though. So we're we're gonna move on. We're gonna go to um, this was a we we asked the the fans out there some questions based on quarterbacks. All five of them. All five. Well, we have eight. We have eight. Oh, sorry. Eight, eight yes, reviews. Eight, eight reviews. Um, and so, one of the first questions that we're going to bring up here is on Marcus Mariota. This comes from at Dynasty Outhouse. Um, really good follow, Australian, right? No, not at all. I th who, who am I thinking of then? FF Down Under, I think you're thinking. Oh, that's him. That's him. Yeah. Sorry, I apologize. Yeah. So, at Dynasty Outhouse, uh, he wants to know what we think of Marcus Mariota. And he expects a bounce back this season. Are we on board with that? Matt, lead us off. Yeah, I'm, I'm de definitely on board with that. I think he had numbers down across the board in, in, in 2017. And a lot of that I think you can really attribute to the the – the lack of creativity in that Mike Malarkey offense, really. I mean, they we, we made fun of his exotic smash mouth, right? And then it was actually decent in 2016 and kind of made us look like – all of us look pretty silly for making fun of him. And then 2017, they tried to do this basically the same thing, and it just didn't really work out. And Mariota's, you know, efficiency was suffered. Uh, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but his, his, his touchdown rate was far lower than uh, either of the other seasons of his career. And I'm excited for – for what Matt LaFleur is going to bring to that offense in terms of the creativity coming from uh, working under Sean McVay uh, uh, last year that uh, working under Kyle Shanahan. He's uh, going, to, going to come out and really have a – now, I, I don't necessarily want to have a full-blown passing attack with Mary. His uh, passing yeah, numbers might not be super uh, – Cut you off there. Sorry, but we're losing you a bunch. I'm not sure if it's our internet connection or yours. I don't know. Can you hear us? Do you want me to start over? Can, can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay. Um, yeah, start over from you said um, – so I'll give you the numbers. So he, you said uh, I don't have the touchdown numbers. Uh, he had okay. 13 last year and then 26 the year before in 2016. So if you want to start up from there because you're okay. getting clearer now. I was looking for the touchdown rate, but that's, it's, I'll, I'll just use that. That's fine. Okay. Uh, he, had, he, he went 13 touchdowns, 15 picks last year, 26 and nine the year before. Got it. Oh, oh, sorry. You've meant something else. Okay. I actually don't have that on me. All right. I meant the percentage, but it's yeah. cool. It, it's fine. I, it doesn't I matter. Right? It's, 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 the raw numbers work out just fine. I, I realized I, as soon as I said that, I apologize. Yeah. 
So his touchdown numbers is are down, you know, from from 2016 and 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 his rookie year in 2015. Clearly, I think a lot of that was attributed to the Michael Michael Malarkey offense and how uncreative it was. You know, we had this exotic Smash Mouth that we all made fun of in 2016 uh, when, when they when they announced it, and and it actually kind of was pretty productive. It was it resulted in Mariota's best. Uh, season of his career so far, but it didn't really work out in 2017. And, and you know, he suffered his, his touchdowns got cut in half. His interceptions went up by six from nine to 15. So, uh, you know, I, I just think that a lot of that was some bad luck and, and maybe a bad offense. Uh, now, enter 2018, and we've got Matt LaFleur coming over from the Los Angeles Rams, <clears throat> excuse me, who's going to presumably run a lot of concepts that he learned from Sean McVay and prior to that from Kyle Shanahan when they worked together in Atlanta. So I, I'm excited about what they're going to do. Uh, I don't necessarily think that Mario is going to be you know a 30 to 35 touchdown guy I think he can get back to that mid-20s range but that's just simply because I think they are they do still want to run the ball they, they signed Deion Lewis to come in uh, and to be able to you know stay on the field for three downs if they want him to do that because he can both run and catch the ball of course they have Derrick Henry here you know who uh, dynasty owners everywhere are hoping he finally breaks out not sure if that's actually going to happen there's been various reports on both sides uh, all training camp and we can't really listen to that and, until we see what happens in the preseason really so um, I'm excited for the offense in, in, in 2018, and I'm, I've been buying parts of it all offseason. So uh, I'm really excited about what it's going to do. I think Mariota is going to have a bounce back. I don't think he's going to have a kind of top five kind of season, but I think he can definitely get back to the QB1 range. Yeah, that was pretty much what I was going to say. And the only thing I'll add is Marcus Mariota, Corey Davis, and Richard Matthews all had hamstring injuries at some point last year. And I find it highly unlikely that basically the entire Titans offense has hamstring injuries again. And Marcus Mariota does have a good amount of his fantasy value come from the fact that he can rush once in a while. And obviously having a hurt hamstring would hurt that a bit. So I do expect him to have a bounce back season as well for all the reasons Matt said. And the fact that hopefully they have a better conditioning coach or I don't know, put in new turf or something because something was going on last season with all their hammies. So, so Matt, let me ask you a question. When when we say bounce back, what, what are you what are you looking at? Like that that can be anything from him going from like a, a low end QB two to like a mid term key a mid uh, uh, term key QB two, mid tier. Excuse me. What, what are you looking at in terms of bounce back? Where does he finish? I know you said outside of the top five. Are you saying QB one? Yeah, I think he can get, sneak into that back half of the QB one range somewhere from the like I don't know like nine to twelve area would be my guess. Um, so yeah, I, I expect him to his touchdowns to come up above twenty. You know, they're only thirteen last season versus fifteen interceptions. So I'd expect him to be in those mid twenty range, and anywhere from you know thirty five to thirty seven hundred yards. I don't think he's probably going to hit forty seven hundred because I just don't know if the offense is going to give him that kind of volume. Um, but yeah, I think he can easily sneak into the back end of that that QB one range. And like Bobby said. Uh, you know, the rushing ability is going to add some of that as long as he can stay healthy. And I think that I think that Matt LaFleur will incorporate that uh, part of his game a lot more than Malarkey did. But let me ask you guys this. What is your favorite part of that offense if you were to buy a buy a part of it? Uh, Whether so not, not not Mariota, any other part, I guess. Uh, I, I've always liked Corey Davis. I've <laughs> liked him. I know this is like a, a, everyone's really down on him. But it was look, it was only his rookie year. He, he was dealing with a little bit of injury. Um, but I, I like Corey Davis a lot. I think he, uh, he's got the nice body. He's got the build. Uh, he was a, a, a complete beast and I was central Michigan, right? Leave it to Sam to use Hot body to talk about. Yeah. Hot someone's body. body. Yeah. <laughs> body. Um, and he's fast too. I, I like Corey Davis a lot. I think he's going to improve his route running a little bit. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to have him out of the slot or if they're going to have him as the number two, I think out of the slot. Is better for him to start with, but he could he could be a wide receiver too if he does very well in training camp. I like Corey Davis in terms of of dynasty and super uh, 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 dynasty superflex. Yeah, and he looked good in the postseason too. Corey Davis was going to be my answer, but since Sam said that, instead I'll shift over to Rashard Matthews, who always seems to be underrated. And part of that right now is everyone thinks the Corey Davis breakout is coming, and so you can get Matthews in I believe something like the twelfth or thirteenth round of dynasty startups. And it probably won't cost more than at most a late second round pick for a contender to pick him up as some additional wide receiver depth. So he's someone that I'm looking at. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, Matt, I'm trying to avoid the running back situation. I do have a few shares of Derrick Henry that I'm just kind of hoping turns out Deion Lewis isn't as much of a threat as we think he is, but it's definitely not something I'm looking to get more involved with. What about you? 
Yeah, I, I, I think Corey Davis is a good answer because he's awesome. I did just trade Corey Davis straight up for Juju, though, and I don't really – I'm not really sure. I think I think it's a good move, but I think it's really like a coin it. flip. It works out long-term between those two. You're lucky you um, didn't do that two months ago because I mentioned on Twitter that I thought Juju was better than Corey Davis, <laughs> and I got jumped on by a bunch of people, including some uh, big-name fantasy football guys. Yeah, uh, it, it's definitely a hot topic there for sure. I, I, I think people are just still putting – enough in that draft so i can i think the really the the really thing that people kind of kind of get hung up on is the fact that antonio brown is there and so they're saying that juju will never be there's no path for him being a wide receiver one right in the nfl but i don't really necessarily think that that matters from a pure protection standpoint um but i was gonna say richard matthews is awesome too because he's so cheap and i got him pretty cheap in the in the fishbowl uh last week in drafts um but my my target really there is delaney walker i know he's old but i just think he's going to be a top 10 tight end and he's cheap you know you can get him for for a mid-second round if the team isn't competing and i think he's got at least this year and maybe even next year and i just think he's so ingrained in that offense that he's he's going to keep putting up numbers as long as he's there so um and, and with as as terrible as the back half of those tight end ones and early tight end twos are i think he's kind of like a ray of hope like if you miss out on on one of those top tight ends you know like start looking for him as soon as jimmy graham goes off the board yeah that's definitely true and i think that i just tend to overlook him because I have so much Johnu Smith everywhere that I'm just hoping Walker goes away, but it's not realistic. It's just my hope. <laughs> I could see Corey Davis starting out the year like really slow, right? Like maybe four or five games and everyone kind of jumping, oh, here we go. Like he's not, not going to come through. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he could just rip off a ton of – like the second half could just be complete fire. And if so if you're somebody that's actually – looking to get Corey Davis. I don't know if I'd pay Ju Juju for him because I like Juju a lot, but I might take the chance where you're kind of waiting until maybe he doesn't do so well the first three or four weeks, and then you jump after him for perceived less value. That that would be my thought process behind it. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I, could, I could see that. I could see that. Uh, I, I think there is potential that he doesn't become an elite receiver in, in year two here, you know, whether it's an injury related or it's, it's just they want to spread the ball around a little bit more. Um, I can see that, but I don't know. It just seems like he's going to hold his value. So I, if I, if I wanted him, I'd probably be trying to buy, you know, now ish before he has a big breakout. Cause you know, if he comes out in week one or even just in the preseason, I think it has like a multiple touchdown game. Like you're never going to be able to buy him for, oh, for even what you can get him now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's basically a crap shoot either way with what you do. Um, yeah. I think right now paying Juju for him, I like Juju a little more, but I can certainly understand the price. Surprise, surprise. The Steelers fan likes Juju more than Corey Davis. I'm so shocked. I'm going to throw my two cents right here with Mariota. I'm going to disagree with you guys. I don't think there's going to be a giant bounce back. Uh, his numbers are kind of with the exception of touchdown and interceptions, and that was the big differentiator last year from the previous year, right? Like his yards are right the same, completion percentage. Um, you know, we could chalk it up to Malarkey and the Titans actually playing a, a better schedule and playing better defensive teams. But his numbers, even when they're – let's say he does go back to like a – you know, let's go like 25 and like 10, 25 and 12 type of year. I just don't see it as a, as a mid-tier QB1 or a high QB1. I think he's a, a fringe QB1, QB2. Uh, so I guess that's kind of a bounce back, but I, I don't know if – I'm not as high. In that's the definitely a bounce back. He had a terrible – when your touchdowns are less than your interceptions for fantasy, that's a huge deal. So I guess some partial credit bounce back. <laughs> sure. <laughs> compared, compared there. Yeah. So, anyways, um, last thoughts on Mariota. Anybody? I was just looking, trying to look up his touchdown rate real quick. Right. But it, it does. It's not that super important. You can just go on, move on if you want. Um. All right. Uh, sorry, I need. I completely left my laptop at home. Shit. All right. <laughs> all good. Uh, it's all oh, good. Awesome. So, um, you guys, let's so let's move on to the next question. Um, this one comes in. Actually, there's a couple guys asking about him. Kevin Kevin underscore Smedley and at FF Stompy. Uh, they're both asking Sam Lane for people who don't know his name. It's FF Stompy. That's the he's got the blue. He's got the blue. Yeah, in. he's also the one who has completely wrong food takes most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we do. He guys get into about food. He has like the complete opposite palate of me. I don't know how it's possible, but he does. So he wants they they want to each want to know about Patrick Mahomes and how high are we on him and why or why not? Bobby, why don't you lead us off this time? Uh, sure. I think I have a different opinion 
uh, than Matt on this one, just from listening to him on the DLF podcast. And that's that I'm essentially thinking at least of this year as Mahomes rookie season. And because of that, I'm not sure he's going to throw as much as people think he is. Unless he turns into Andrew Luck, who threw a ton his rookie season, I'm just not quite sure I'm ready to buy into that QB7 uh, value that I think he was in the July ADP. There are some guys going behind him that I'd prefer. Uh, Jared Goff was someone that everybody knows I really like. I think Kirk Cousins is going behind him, and I, at the moment, at least, believe I'd take Cousins over him as well. But I believe in Matt. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you're much higher on him than I am. I, I do really like Mahomes, and I understand the um, the hesitation with him. The thing for me is that right now Jimmy Jimmy Garoppolo is going quarterback five in Dynasty ADP, <laughs> yeah, and Patrick too. Mahomes is going a few spots behind him. Well, actually, I, I take that back. It was it was in June where Garoppolo was five. He's he's dropped down to seven in July. Yeah. Um, Mahomes is at eight right behind him. And I had a debate with a few people when he was QB, when Garoppolo was QB five, I was like, I don't understand why these two are separated by, by three spots here. And in fact, I would rather have Mahomes mostly based on the weapons that he has. You know, he had a top 12 wide receiver, he had a top 12 tight end or he had the number one tight end. Uh, and, and he had the, the, the running back who had the most rushing yards in the league last season. So I, I just, I think I feel like it all comes back to Mahomes there, and I understand the rookie argument and everything. Um, and, and I agree, I have some hesitation there. I just think that he has so many weapons; it's going to be difficult for him to fail. I love what Andy Reid does with quarterbacks in, in general. Um, and I, I, Ryan actually asked me. I don't know if it's released yet. I don't think it is. But in the DLF podcast coming out this week, probably will be out by the time you guys hear this one. Um, uh, we were doing a few bets, uh, and, and it seemed like I was down on the Kansas City offense in general because I think that Kelsey and and Tyree Kill are probably going to take a small step back just because Sammy Watkins is in town. And I know you have the turn down for what article, so we might have a big debate about this too. And not not necessarily that I think Sammy Watkins is going to come in and just dominate the the offensive targets or anything, but I do think he's going to take away from those two in the passing game a lot more than anyone else ever has from the from those two guys. So this this offense kind of reminds me a little bit back in the the Drew Brees days when he was I guess and say back in the day because really just two or three years ago right just last year was a little bit of a down year for Brees in terms of overall production but uh, it, it's the point where you don't know where the ball is going to go because you have an offense that's so good that it kind of all just comes back to the quarterback so it's kind of a little bit like about an arbitrage play I don't know who's going to get all the targets in that offense so I want the quarterback and that's kind of how I feel about Mahomes I do really like him as a player though uh, I, I, I tend to gravitate towards those gunslinger quarterbacks you know being a Packers fan uh, and growing up with Brett Favre and, and now of course Aaron Rodgers you know I kind of like that those guys that have that little bit of chip on the shoulder that moxie so so you know a part of it is has nothing to do with him uh, you know you know his, his necessarily his production in year one but for dynasty in general I just I just love what he what he uh, the situation that he's in and those offensive talent around him and since I don't know which of those pass catchers is really gonna just dominate this year I just it brings me back to the quarterback yeah and I can get on board with that I think my issue is currently his price because I'm expecting a down year in his year one, I think you'll be able to get him a little bit cheaper after this season if you just wait for him to have somewhat of a down year and other quarterbacks pass him. But I'm definitely on board with everything else you said, including um, my friend Zach Wilkins uh, at Lopsided Trades is going to hate me for this one, but including that I'd rather have Patrick Mahomes than Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy, I'm sorry, you are my number one in QB handsomeness, but you are not my number one in QB dyno. I just don't see how you can I mean if you could see that the players are you know at at I know I know Garoppolo has been in the in the in the league longer he's been behind Brady studied behind him and all that but if you look at where they are in terms of their playing career, like they're not too far apart. And when you look at the weapons that Mahomes has versus Garoppolo, I just don't think it's even really a question. So Pam? I I'm actually I'm obviously a, uh, Jimmy J GQ. Uh, Mahomes, I am. I, I I understand. I I I have him as a QB one next year. Um, I think the from what we saw, not just in New England, but then when he came over and transitioned very quickly, uh, and under Shanahan, no less. And I know Shanahan's not throwing the darts, but still, he did something with Matt Ryan. He, he's done stuff with other quarterbacks, and he's going to do it with Jimmy GQ. So that that matters a lot. One thing I think what you said, Bobby, is interesting. I'll go to Mahomes in a second. Uh, as to where I think he's going to finish, but am I high? I think one of the questions was like, "Am I high on him this year?" 
I'm not nearly as high as I am on him if it would be like year three down the road, right, or year two. And I think that's that's obvious, right? But they're going to – Andy Reid actually does run the ball quite often as for a head coach. And I could see um, all of those backs getting the ball a heavy amount of times. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say Mahomes is going to have a bad year, but I don't know if he's going to throw as much as Alex Smith did last year. And that has a direct correlation to, to the fantasy numbers. But, I mean, the weapons are great. But if I have <laughs> – if I have Kareem Hunt, I mean, I'm just giving him the ball like 20, 25 times a game and and, and call it. And then uh, that's just my, my thought process on Henry Reid. I guess, am I high on Mahomes this year? I would say no. And to your credit, you could get him for it. Yeah, if that theory runs true, you could get him for a cheaper price next year because then the, everyone's like off of him. I will add, though, you also run the very real risk that he does come out and dominate or at least play fairly well like a back-end QB1 this year. And if that happens, his price will never be lower than it is right now. So there is that always that coin flip. Yeah, that can happen with anyone, though. Matt, you look like you're burning to say something more about Mahomes. <laughs> no, not really. I just I think people. I personally feel like I, just, I guess we, this has turned into a Garoppolo versus Mahomes day. And don't get me wrong, I think they're both going to be great uh, young quarterbacks. Um, but I think people look at what Garoppolo did and are amazed by it. But I look at what Garoppolo did, and I see six, in his starts, he threw six touchdowns and five interceptions. Like, am I, is that a quarter, quarterback five? I mean, I have issues with other other quarterbacks that are propped up there too. Deshaun Watson is quarterback two, and in, in, in Dynasty ADP right now. So, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I think you can't go wrong either way. I just prefer what Mahomes did. You know, in, in week 17, it was one game, I know, but he was playing with the twos in his offense and he was playing against, uh, I believe it was Denver, who was running most of their, their first team defense out there. And he didn't throw a touchdown, but he had a very productive game. And I don't know, he looked good. So I'm not really willing to place what Mahomes has done on the field as a starter versus Mahomes as a, 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 on the field as a starter. Sorry, did I say Mahomes twice? Mahomes versus Gu Garoppolo on the field as starters. I think they're relatively in the same place in their career right there so uh I yeah know. i don't know it's half a dozen six of whatever the saying is <laughs> i think they're both going to be great i don't think you can go wrong with either one of them the, the only thing I was, i'll respond with with the jimmy g thing is yeah the touchdown to interception ratio was low but if you look at the complete body and you see you know he completed like 67 68 percent of his passes which isn't too far off from the numbers yet in new england <laughs> The low touchdown rate is just – it's not sustainable compared to, like, if you look at the entire body of work and you compare it to the every NFL quarterback that's had those numbers, he, he's going to he's gonna have the touchdowns up. I'm just – obviously, I'm, I'm just going on, like, trends and projections of history, not necessarily Jimmy G history, but that's the only thing, I, that's the only thing I'll, I'll combat with that. I just It's not sustainable for him to be that low of a touchdown and interception. I don't know. Maybe I'm. Maybe no, I'm I, no, I. No, I completely agree with you. But I think a lot of that comes down to weapons too. And I, and, and I think next off season is going to be huge for San Francisco. Like they're going to go out and get you know a true wide receiver one. I hope. Uh, you know, I, I was really hoping that that uh, Allen Robinson landed in San Francisco and give him that yeah. true true weapon that he needed. I like Pierre Garcon. I like Dante Pettis. I like all of those guys. But I'm not sure that any of them is are really dominant but in that field. Like that game. Goodwin doesn't even get the mention. I like Marquise Goodwin too. I I liked him on Buffalo. I mean, I, I he reminded me a lot of um, uh, a little bit like of of Lee Evans. Remember Lee Evans back in, in Buffalo in those days? He's kind of that speedster. So yep. I, I I I like that he's finally done something with in, in terms of uh, production on the field. So uh, I don't hate any of those guys. I just don't think they're dominant, you know, wide receiver one kind of caliber guys. This is such a funny thing too about the fantasy. I guess Twitter community or just generally the fantasy and dino community that we really like to split hairs. So we'll be like, Oh, who do yeah. you like better? Kareem Hunt or Alvin Kamara? It's like, you can't go wrong with either one. Yeah, right. <laughs> Same exactly. Mahomes and Garoppolo. I agree that I don't think you can go wrong with either one. I think both are going to have very successful careers. I think when you're that close, it's just, you take the guy that you like, right? Yep. Yeah. They find some reason. Maybe you like one team's colors better you find one more person. <laughs> one has a hot bod, as Sam likes to go for. You never know. Who was it? Uniforms was it? are important. Co Kevin, like I can never be a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan because I can't get behind those those calculator numbers. You know. Oh yeah, those are gross. How about the purple <laughs> of the Baltimore Ravens? Who loves purple? I don't mind the Ravens uniform actually. I, I, the other one that everybody pans is the the Jaguars helmets, right? I've heard that it looks like a, a melted Rolo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the how the Rolo candy has that goldish uh, <laughs> wrapper. So it's just like the melted black against it. 
Yeah, for the most part, I find I don't mind uniforms, but the Jags num or not the Jags, the Tampa Bay Bucks numbers definitely bother me. They're real bad. Bring back the creamsicle. Just do it. <laughs> I'll tell you what. There's two uniforms that stand out in which I'm like, one just makes me want to puke. The other one, I'm like, man, those are the most beautiful uniforms in the history of the NFL. The one that makes me puke is when the Seahawks wear that neon green. <laughs> That's really bad and disgusting. It reminds me, yeah. do you guys remember World League, the Orlando Predators? Not the yeah. Predators. Was, I think it was, was, no, the Orlando Thunder, I think it was. <laughs> they had their, their regular uniforms were those lion green uniforms. Oh, that's, that's disgusting. That's gross. Oregon did some stuff like that for a while, too, University of Oregon. And then, oh, yeah, because they have, what's his name, Phil Nike there, right, like right there making uniforms for him, so he does right. all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> given those, those, those awesome uh, locker rooms. And then the, the uniforms that I really, really loved, San Diego Chargers, those powder blues. Oh, yeah, man. Make them the full-time uniform. They're beautiful. They really are. I've, everyone I've talked to loves that uniform. I'm really surprised it's not the full-time uniform. Hmm. Maybe it would lose a little bit of its luster if they, they did it all the time. So like you like when you see it, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to watch the Chargers this week just for the uniforms, you know. And then you can just get spoiled week and week. It's like having ice cream for dinner every night. <laughs> so here's a quick question and then we can we'll move on we're not going to include jimmy g because obviously he would win this debate <laughs> but more attractive qb Mariota or mahomes man that's tough because they i'm gonna i'm gonna pull them up before i say something bad <laughs> real quick I, I, have to, I have to say i feel like they kind of look a little bit similar I was going to say they look a little similar. I should, okay, good. It's not just me then. Because I was looking at their pictures before I even asked it. Like, I got to ask this. I'm going Mariota. Uh, I like Mariota. Uh, even though Mahomes is good, I think Mariota is just a little more clean cut. Yeah. A little, I gotta, more, little more asymmetrical face, which I like. I got to go with Mariota too. And it was because I was thinking of their hair. And Mahomes has like kind of weird curly hair, if I remember. True. And I'm just not really that into that. So that's, uh, that's See, my reason. I, See, I was going to say Mahomes because of the hair. <laughs> also, so on the reverse side, because he's got that wild hair. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, I don't know if you guys can see on here, but my hair is ridiculously long. It's the longest it's ever been in my life. I haven't ever had a haircut in six months, and I absolutely hate it, uh, but my wife loves it. So I think the girls like that, that crazy haircut. You if, know, if the SO loves it, man, you got to keep it. Speaking it's true. It's true. Right now on your beard, I was going to say, I don't know if you've ever gotten this. I can't remember the actor's name, but you look like uh, the guy who plays Rick. In, uh, yep, I was just gonna. I brought that up uh, the last game night. Someone said I look like uh, Patrick. No, he said I look like Kirk Cousins, I think. And I was like, no, but I've heard Rick Grimes before. And yeah. in fact, in the middle of an airport, uh, the last time I was on a plane, some like teenager, whatever, so I was like, oh my God, it's Rick Grimes. To which I replied, Coral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you def if you ever get mistaken for a celebrity, you definitely just have to lean into it. It might have to be my Halloween costume this year. <laughs> have you ever signed memorabilia just as Frank? What's the guy's, <laughs> what's the guy's real name? I have no idea. I stopped. Oh, God, I, sh I should know, but I Andrew don't. Lincoln. That's it. Andrew Lincoln. Uh, there you go. Yeah. You signed I need to work on my British accent, though, I guess, if I'm going to pull it off in, in real life. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's true. The, Brit the British accent there. Um, cool. Good stuff, uh, Frank. Um, so, or no, Rick. Why do I keep saying Frank Grimes? <laughs> I don't know, man. I was oh, just letting you roll with it. The Simpsons, the Simpsons. <laughs> I keep thinking of Frank Grimes as Rick Grimes. All right, Rick. Um, all right, so speaking of The Walking Dead, we have a little bit of a... You know, when I said that, I just want to point this out. I didn't realize what a good segue that would be. Yeah. Into our next question. That was a professional level segue, I must say. <laughs> it's, it's very good, very good, Bobby. Very yeah. good. You're, you're going after you're going after him with the number one chair. Just intuition, you know? <laughs> Um, I actually like this question. It's really funny. It's from at Eric John Flynn. Part of being a zookeeper, no doubt, is having to make hard decisions when it comes to an animal's end of life. Which QB, which QB or QBs need to be put out of their misery before it becomes a painful existence? What a, what a creative question. That is a very creative question. And Eric is a great guy. And actually, just really quick, Matt, before you answer the question, uh, since Eric is in this league, I'm going to take a quick minute to shout out red list two which is a league that matt runs that all the money in the league essentially goes to endangered animals and we all play for a different animal i'm playing for penguins with jake anderson 
and we definitely have one of the best teams despite Matt making fun of me for being excited that we got Adam Thielen in the auction. So definitely appreciate everything Matt did in setting this up and including me in it. It's been a lot of fun. There's already been a lot of uh, smack talk going on, especially with rivals being selected this week. And anytime you can play fantasy for charity, it's a win in my book. Yeah, it's. I, I will. I will correct you though. It's not all the money. We still have to have something oh. to play for. It's. Oh, it's only twenty five percent, guys. It, it, it'll end up being uh, about seven hundred and fifty dollars or so from this league, and then the other league that that uh, uh, that Red List won also sends about three hundred dollars um, in, into the into charity every year. So it's it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm glad people are into it. When I first started, I was like, are people even going to care about this? But luckily, you know, our our pal Scott Fish kind of started off that uh that that charity aspect so got a lot of people on board with that and eric eric is awesome he was actually on game night he got he bought he bought a sh game night shirt so he got randomly selected to be on he, he is in the uk and he was a trooper he came in on, came on at like i don't know what it was like 3 a.m in the morning his time um he did not win but uh, i'm sure it was it was mostly because of, of the time difference there and having to wake up early um but on to the question uh do you just want me to talk about the quarterback or do you want me to actually talk about the zookeeper part uh, they're not mutually exclusive, are they? I mean, compare, I guess compare the quarterback to what? Well, it depends on how you want to how you want to phrase it. Because if you want to say like most of the time, an animal's end of life comes when they're old, right? So if we're gonna go that way, we 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 have to rule out all the quarterbacks that aren't aren't old. Um, if we're gonna look at it a different way, maybe they're just not. Maybe it's a quality of life issue or something like that. Sometimes that happens where an animal like breaks a leg and it can't make a full recovery. So, so a decision is made if it can't get around on its own to uh, to go ahead and, and euthanize it, even if it's a young, even if it's a young animal. So, uh, taking it from that angle, I'm gonna say Joe Flacco. I think it's time for him to go, at least from Baltimore, because we need to see what that young gazelle needs to get out there and run around lamar jackson needs to get out there and show us what he can do everybody's excited to see lamar jackson i i cannot wait to see that guy get on the field so for me it's joe flacco put him out to pasture uh he can be a, an elite uh, uh grazer out in the pasture right i'm, I'm sure he's going to hook on with another team he's not done or anything but uh this question like that was really the first one that popped out to me was flacco when I wrote the show sheet, I was really tempted to say besides Joe Flacco because he's the first one that comes to mind for me too. And I realized we would all just be saying, yes, Joe Flacco needs to be put out to pasture. Joe Flacco, if you or your family listen, we don't actually want to put you out to pasture. Uh, we just want to see Lamar Jackson do what he can do and for the Ravens to actually be a decent offense. What if I were to change up the question? And it said, the question is maybe not necessarily end an animal's life, but what if it's to send a different animal to a different zoo that has like better facilities or something? I don't know. Or just so maybe a better fit. Essentially, you're saying that it's, you want to move a quarterback yes. that's in a bad situation <laughs> to a good situation. Yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> huh, that's, that's an interesting twist. Yeah, that is an interesting twist. I'll let you go first, Bobby. <laughs> First of all, I, I think I, I kind of have one off the top of my head. So and then, yeah, go, go for it. First. I'll go first. Um, and maybe we're stealing this from from Chris and Adam last week when it was on our game. But but what about Teddy Bridgewater? Getting Ooh, out that's of, a good uh, one. Out of the Jets. Uh, I think he's still got some some gas left. He's probably – I realize he hasn't been at game speed probably for a year, year plus. But I think, you know, he still, had the, he still has the talent. Move him to a team that could, that could use him, maybe one that could, I don't know, like – maybe not necessarily win this year, but definitely kind of develop the talent around him. I mean, the first thing on my head was the Giants, but that's not <laughs> going to happen. Um, so I, I actually, so I really wanted Teddy Bridgewater on the Giants. Mm. I thought he could be the future of the Giants if they signed him, but he's still relatively young. <clears throat> he's like 20. What if Bridgewater goes to the saints to, to back up breeze and then I, takes over for breeze in a couple of years. I actually kind of really like that. That'd be cool too. I I think that would be good to see as well. You know, Sean Payton can work with him. He can work yeah. with him. Your 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 Bridgewater uh uh whatever you want to call it, answer um kind of made me think of Tyrod Taylor though. I've been a Tyrod Taylor apologist, you know, basically his entire career. I love the guy. I think he's a better quarterback than we give him credit for. He never really got the respect due to him in Buffalo, despite him really being the best quarterback Buffalo has had since what, like Drew Bledsoe in the early two thousands. So yeah. 
so and now he goes to Cleveland, and I'm excited to see what he can do there. But obviously, the writing is on the wall with Baker Mayfield. So I hope at some point he goes to a team and he can just, you know, he's obviously always going to be kind of a stepping stone quarterback to the next guy. But you know, at least at least put him on a team where you know he's going to be the starter for the whole year, and and, and a team that surrounds him with with weapons to to really make him successful. So uh, I think Tyra Taylor and, and, T- and Teddy Bridgewater also are very good answers. Yeah, Matt took my second one, so I'm going to go with some answer, but I'm going to take Josh Rosen out of the Cardinals where he has no playmakers and move him over to the Giants where he should have been in the first place. And, it's like uh, you guys are Giants fans or something. Yeah, I am. well, he's not. He's a Steelers fan, but I'm a Giants oh, okay. fan. And it's like, you know, maybe he should have been on the team in the first place, but sorry, Cardinals fans, a.k.a. Travis Rasmussen, who listens, but... You guys have nothing outside of David Johnson and maybe Christian Kirk. Larry Fitzgerald is probably going to retire within two or three seasons, if I had to guess. So let's give Rosen, you know, Odell, Ingram, Shepard, and I guess Barkley, since he's now there, through, even though that's the reason that Rosen isn't there. And uh, let's just see what Josh Rosen can do with all that. And that'll be fun for me and for everyone's fantasy teams, too. I think that makes sense. I mean, I like it. You really weaseled your way out of that question, but I think it makes sense a lot. It's really – so I don't know. Do you guys have a third guy? I was trying to think of a third guy or maybe like a backup quarterback who I thought really deserved a shot. But outside of Teddy Bridgewater, I really struggled to come up with someone who I thought this guy deserves a shot to start or outside of Teddy Bridgewater or moving Tyrod Taylor to team what, ability. What, what, what about, about – go ahead. Nick Foles maybe? Nick Foles is a decent one. Although I think he's had his chance. I think he's had his chances yeah. elsewhere. Um, I was going to say, what about Dak Prescott? Because clearly that coaching staff is terrible. I don't know why Jason Garrett still has a job. What if they put him with a creative coach that could actually make use of, you know, especially his running ability? Well, plus they made it a point to not give him anyone. Like exactly. As is gone, yeah. uh, wait and retired. I, I don't even know who's going to be the primary. What, Hearns, I guess? Is it going to be him? Hearns is probably the one. Gallup hopefully turns into, you know, the one. I don't think it's going to happen to your one. I guess the uh, question becomes, where would you move Prescott to? Yeah. What about, uh, man, that's tough, yeah. Because I was thinking of it like, okay, not only am I moving them from a better situation, but it has to make sense. It can't just be like, oh, yeah, I'm moving Josh Rosen to the Packers to replace Aaron Rodgers. Like, no, that doesn't really make a ton of sense. You can move Dak Prescott to the Bears. I like Trubisky, though. Oh, I know you, you could move him. What if you moved him to one of these places with older quarterbacks? We could say New Orleans again if we wanted to, but I don't really think he is necessarily the, the – you know, a similar type of quarterback there. But what if he went to like backup Roethlisberger or uh, Charger. uh, or Chargers? Yeah, that's my other one, Philip Rivers. You know, maybe not starting right now because he never really got a year to kind of sit back and learn. He was kind of thrown in right away. So maybe he just needs to take a break and, and learn from a vet. Yeah, the Chargers definitely make sense. Well, hell, what about New England? Also, I'm surprised that you didn't. Yeah. So every guest lately has taken the opportunity to take a shot at Blake Portals just because they know how much <laughs> I like him. So I was really just <laughs> waiting for you to say, oh, yeah, why don't we just take him to Jacksonville to replace the trash that's Portals there? I, I was actually going to go a little bit meaner than that and say, what about the reverse of the question? What quarterback do we want to move to a different situation because we want to see them fail? And that would be Bortles. <laughs> I don't know if he would be successful anywhere else. <laughs> or, or, or I guess more to the point that any other team would be as as uh, patient with him. Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, if Bortles were on the Giants, for example, I would not hate it. I think the rest of New York would hate, would hate you, though. They probably would. They'd be like, this guy. If I was the GM and I <laughs> traded for Bortles, I'd be run out of town. You'd also be the only one wearing a Bortles Giants jersey. No one else would ever. <laughs> True. Yeah. That's 100% accurate. If Blake Bortles ever ends up a Giant, I'm getting a jersey. All right. Great stuff today, guys. Uh, we got to move on. We're a little, running a little low on time, so I want to get to what Matt's doing over on the uh, Game Night podcast and the uh, Dynasty League football podcast, and then also the Zookeeper podcast. So tell us a little bit about, and you can pick whichever one you want to talk about. You can pick about, talk about any of them, whichever one you want to get started with. Give, give us a little rundown, a little introduction and rundown of what you're doing over at um, all these different shows. Sure. Yeah. The DLF podcast is kind of like, 
I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to sound braggadocious or anything, but they've been around forever. I think they were really the first main dynasty pod f- focused podcast. We're on episode episode 315 will come out this week. So, uh, that's, that's a lot, that's a lot of, a lot of time in terms of podcast history, uh, when you have a show once a week. Um, so I mean, I'm with Ryan McDowell there, the face of dynasty fantasy football. And of course, Dan Myler, um, who is also an awesome writer. Um, so that's, that's a pretty standard We're We're known as the flagship podcast, but it's, it's, it's really I don't really like that word because it kind of like makes the other podcasts that we have there not seem as important. And that's not true. We're just kind of like the more gen- general kind of catch all kind of show that talks about everything dynasty related, whereas the other ones are a little bit more focused. Dynasty Game Night recently joined the, the DLF family of podcasts on its on the on the aggregate feed and it's basically a game it's just basically a game show it's for centered around fantasy football and dynasty um so if you like game shows and like like fantasy football and you want to play along then check that show out i think it's a lot of fun I, we're on episode 22 or 23 of that one i thought it i didn't even know if it would go it would last like three episodes i didn't i thought people might hate it so um, i'm excited that people like that one um and then i have a another podcast not football related called zookeeper stories and it basically i just ripped off matt Harmon's idea for backyard banner i did approach him and he was uh he said yes go go ahead and do it but basically the the theory is that just like with fantasy football writers people say ask you the question you know how do you get to do this and fantasy football is a little bit different basically the answer there is you start writing right um zookeeper is a little bit more involved but we get the similar question almost every day at our training sessions and keeper talks you know how do i get to do this job so i and i went on itunes and checked it out and there was literally no zookeeper podcast out there so i thought that had to be a thing so basically i just bring on zookeepers and interview them about their path and their journey of how they got their job and what they're doing now um uh, a lot of fun there too so if you're interested in a non non fantasy football podcast check that one out yeah, that's really cool. And, and just going back to game night, uh, Bobby actually referred me to game night, and I'm, I that's one of the uh, – I'm trying to listen to more podcasts, more recommendations. I really enjoy what you and uh, Johnny are doing over there. It's, it's really fun to listen to you guys. Thankfully, he didn't listen to the episode with me on. Yeah. I, I just <laughs> So. He made it a point to tell me. He said, "Don't listen to me." And I was like, "All right, fine." So I waited two weeks and listened to the to one after that. But um, Zookeeper story yeah. sounds really cool, and we can find that over on iTunes. Yeah, you can find it on iTunes and Stitcher. I should probably put it on Google Play and other places, but it's not uh, in any anywhere but iTunes or Stitcher right now. One other and note. they're sporadic. They're sporadic too. Like they're when I started the show, it was like once every week for four weeks, and then it became like a month, and then I think there was like a six month gap between a couple of episodes. <laughs> so I'm trying to really put one out for every single month, but it's just really hard because keepers. Uh, there's a few reasons why it's hard. Number one, keepers are generally pretty introverted. That's one of the reasons why they are zookeepers and don't want to work with people, right? They want to work with animals. And the other reason is the zoo industry has a lot of pri- proprietary information that they don't want their their people talking about stuff that they that may shed negative light on the zoo. So, um, but you know, check it out, and and there'll be episodes sporadically throughout the year. Does the zookeeper stories have as comfortable a T-shirt as the DGN pod does? <laughs> It doesn't. It should have a t-shirt, but it doesn't, unfortunately. Yeah. So also, in case you guys didn't realize, DGN Pod has t-shirts for sale, $20 each. Our friend John would probably kill both me and Matt if we didn't plug it here. So there you go. And uh, I'm not wearing it today, but it is actually a super comfortable, super soft shirt. Yeah, actually made by uh, John's, I think John's cousin own, cousin or something or nephew or something has owns a, a t-shirt business. So they did it for us. They're super nice. Well, We'll have to reach out to them about the uh, upcoming Afterburners t-shirts. Yeah. Got to get that swag made. So thanks so much, Matt, for being on here. Really appreciate it. Um, all that stuff sounds great. I'm really looking forward to listening to the Zookeeper stories, absolutely, of, of that one, too. Um, obviously, listen to the other two. Uh, we're running out of time, so we are going to have to go to our burns of the week. Every week, we burn something or someone or some facet of society and it's like your moment of zen speaking of the daily show earlier except the angry <laughs> version of your moment of zen where you just get to let go of pent up frustration the lewis black version of yeah, Af- Black, i was gonna say of daily show so who, who who wants to get started i can if nobody else wants to lead it off lead us off bobby all right so this morning i was getting a ice black tea from a specialty shop here in new york city and the woman in front of me had the most complicated order that I've ever heard in my life. That's already a burn for me. But then she was like joking around with the bar or not the bartender. What do you call it? Barista. Sorry. Barista, yeah. The barista about like, oh, I should have like my own milk bar because I like to pour it myself this exact way. Literally, the barista poured a little bit of milk for them, showed the woman and she was like, no, that's not right, which might be the most obnoxious thing <laughs> that I've ever seen in a coffee shop mm. ever happen. 
So if you're self-important enough to think that baristas have to match like your exact level of milk pour, I don't know what to say to you. That was just a pure display of self-importance and I can't even get over it. Then they're holding the lineup. Yeah, so. they were holding me up and all I wanted, this is my order, ready? I want, Coffee. No, no, I want an black iced tea. That's it. That was it. And I was there for like 20 minutes while she went like, yeah, I want the foam on top, but the milk has to be this level. And also, can you get some cherries? But they have to be from the rainforest on the specific tree. <laughs> and it was just ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, if you are that specific about your coffee, make it make it yourself. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's the answer. Um, cool. Good, good burn there, Bobby. Matt, you want to go up next? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm, I'm kind of out of a rough spot. Last month has been kind of rough on me because I've had a lot of a lot of people. I don't know if we call it service industries, our mechanics and things like that. Is that service industry? I don't know if it is, but so I, if it's not, then I apologize for the people in the service industry. But why can't people just do what they say they're going to do? You know, I don't know anything that much about cars. If you tell me you're going to do something and fix something, why can't you just do that? Why do I have to go away and find out that you didn't actually fix anything? Specifically, in the last last month, I upgraded my Jeep. Uh, I got bigger tires, new shocks, and a lift on there. The guy put the shock in the wrong orientation. So I go and I start driving down the road and start hearing all these noises. And uh, don't really think that much of it because Jeeps make noises in, in general. But I get home, which is, you know, 60 miles away from the off-road shop that put the, the shock in and the thing is in wrong it, it, it's been slamming against the jeep body it's completely ruined a 350 dollars shock now i've got to go another 120 mile round trip up there to have him fix it it threw off the traction control threw off all this stuff so if you find a good mechanic <laughs> hold on tight and, and and share that mechanic with with your friends because the experiences that i have had over the last month or so dealing with uh, people just not doing what they're going to say they say they're going to do in, in terms of fixing things for you when you know nothing about it and that's why you come to them in the first place and pay them you know thousands of dollars to do a job for you and they do it incorrectly that that's my burn i, I just i'm i'm in a i'm in a, a bad a, kind of a low spot with my faith in humanity right now so but uh it could bring it coming back to the dynasty commuting and seeing all of the awesome things we do here between fantasy cares and and scott fishbowl and everything awesome that you guys do and everybody else in the industry and seeing people come together uh um, in this community to do good things kind of restores that faith a little bit. So find you a David putty that you can uh, <laughs> and go exactly. Um, all right. So I'll make, I'll make mine quick. Uh, schedules came out recently. And again, people hating on the sec and college football because the sec has, they're playing cupcakes near the end of the season in November. Listen, power five conferences. If you don't like it, you can do the exact same thing. Schedule yourself a cupcake late in November. But you know what? You're not playing the number three, four, five, six, 10, 15 team week in and week out in the SEC. You don't like it, schedule it or beat an SEC team. That's it. That's all you have to come down to, all you SEC haters. So that's that's my burn of the week is everyone hating on the SEC on Twitter. Not a fan of it. Obviously a little biased. There we go. That's, that's, that's it. He really wanted to say go Gamecocks at the end of that. I really did. <laughs> Game Koch. I, I, I really yeah, do. Game Koch's. Game Koch's. Game Koch. Game Koch. Yeah. This is a lot of fun, Matt. Thanks for being on, man. We would love to have you on again uh, in the future as soon as the uh, – certainly as the season gets closer around and starts winding up. Does that sound good? Yeah, anytime, man. This is a lot of fun. Great, man. Thanks again for, for coming on. And uh, we're going we're gonna to sign off. But before we do, um, go ahead and, and throw your handles and, and where we can find your work. And, and Bob will follow up, and then we'll close it out. You can find all my work uh, at DynastyLeagueFootball.com and my Twitter handle is at mpricer. Yep. And just make sure, guys, that you also check out at DGNPod on Twitter and subscribe and listen. It's a great listen. And at DLF Podcast, I think podcast is spelled out in that handle mm -hmm. just is. to uh, throw that out there. And also Zookeeper Stories. Matt does a ton of podcasts. They're all super awesome. He and John are honestly some of my favorite people to listen to on podcasts and pretty much anything they do I listen to. Uh, you can find me at Rec Fantasy. That's R-E-K-E-D Fantasy. Like Matt, you can find my work on Dynasty League Football as well as 2QBs.com. Yeah, I'm going to second what Bobby said. Love love the uh, Dynasty Game Night uh, podcast. Uh, I'm, I'm obviously, the, the the flagship is great too, but I'm a big fan of the, of the Game Night podcast, so keep doing that and give it a chance. Give it a listen. Uh, this is the Afterburners podcast. Find us at Afterburners Pod. Don't forget to download, subscribe, and review us on iTunes. Find us on Podbean Stitcher. I am at the needy one. Just launched a blog too. So if you ever want to read about my my dating life escapade.
New York and different stories from there, feel free to check it out. That's on my Twitter handle. It's 30somethingman.com. Tune in next week. We're excited. Have a good weekend. Enjoy the rest of your mock drafts or regular drafts, and good luck in Scott Fishbowl. Until next time, keep it classy, Fantasy Twitter.